Okay, we're getting somewhere now. Um, so in the last video, we spoke about the action potential. This, again, repeating myself, but it's really important. This fundamental information, uh, unit of information generated by a neuron. And the action potential is this spike, uh, a reversal of the membrane potential. And the last video, we spoke about exactly how this action potential is generated by the opening of these um, voltage-gated sodium ions, followed by um, the opening of voltage-gated potassium ions, which causes the membrane potential to shoot up and then come back down to its resting potential. So let's go back to the action potential and look at it uh, again and point one or two things out. Okay, so here we are. Here is the action potential. Um, so here we are at zero. So this is the resting potential here. Now, I've drawn another line here. You should know now what this line represents. Yes, it represents the, the membrane potential, the voltage at which um, sodium, uh, voltage-gated sodium channels open. Um, and we said it was around kind of minus 55 millivolts. Now, this membrane potential, this voltage is so important, um, is, it has a special name and it's called the threshold potential. Now, why is it called the threshold potential? It's called the threshold potential because it is the threshold, the, the voltage threshold beyond which uh, an action potential will be initiated. You know, once those voltage-gated sodium channels open, you're getting an action potential. It's, it's an all or nothing um, effect, basically, an all or nothing principle. So this um, membrane potential, we've drawn it as this perfectly straight line, but actually in, in, in reality, and as we will see, uh, we will see shortly, uh, this membrane potential isn't actually kind of completely stable and flat, but it's actually fluctuating. It moves up, it moves down, uh, up and down, but as long as it doesn't go near that at that threshold potential, as long as it doesn't reach the the voltage at which these voltage gated sodium channels open, nothing will happen. However, and as we can see here, if the membrane potential goes up towards the uh, and reaches the threshold potential, then you get an actual action potential. So these are the two key. Uh, landmarks, if you like, in the membrane potential of a neuron, the resting potential and the uh, threshold potential. Now, just a bit of a uh, terminology. Um, I've kind of spoken about the membrane potential going upwards and downwards. There's actually a, a more technical term which is more correct and which we will use. When the membrane potential goes up, this is called depolarization. So the normally the, the neuron and its resting potential, it's polarized. Uh, there is a negative charge on the inside relative to the outside. So it's depolarizing it. It's pushing it towards zero, in fact, and obviously it overshoots with the action potential. Uh, but that's why it's called depolarization. Um, and when the membrane potential goes downwards in this direction towards the negative, um, this is called, as you would expect, polarization, or often re-polarization, because the, the neuron normally sits at a negative uh, and is polarized, we normally call it re-polarization, because normally a neuron will only sit at this uh, kind of plus 40 millivolts, very, 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 very briefly, it doesn't sit there long at all, until it goes back to the resting potential. So you have depolarization caused by opening of voltage-gated sodium channels, followed by repolarization caused by opening of voltage-gated potassium channels. Now, when it overshoots here, for reasons we won't go into so much, not that important, this little overshoot is often called hyper. Yeah, hyper hyperpolarization. So we'll use these terms uh, quite a lot. So ge generally when, when, when we're talking about depolarization, we simply mean pushing the membrane potential uh, in, in the positive direction. Um, so here where the membrane potential is, is rising just a little bit, this is a little bit of depolarization. 
and this is a little bit of repolarization. Obviously, this is huge amount of depolarization, and this is complete repolarization. But all, but even if it's just moving a little bit in the positive direction, we still call that um, depolarization. Okay, I think that is um, enough on the action potential. So now, clear that. So now, when you see something like this. Get this going. Um, you can actually see what's actually going on here. This is a, a measurement from a neuron, um, and each of these little spikes indeed represents a single action potential. And so here we can see the neuron again. The, the don't worry about the units; they're slightly different here. It's not quite not measuring the membrane potential as such, um, but. You see, each of these little things here is a represents an action potential. There's lots of them, and you can see they form something called a spike train, simply because it is a train of spikes. Uh, and now you understand exactly what that spike train is. It is a series of action potentials, a series of depolarizations, rapid depolarizations, followed by rapid repolarization, and then back to the resting potential. Okay, good. Okay, so these action potentials, these, uh, these units of information, are generated uh, at the, um, in the axon, uh, and they are generated at a point. Let's actually show this diagram. So here we can see, this is a um, animation of action potentials. So the action potential actually starts here. And this is called the axon hillock. Hillock. The axon hillock. Um, and the action potential actually spreads along the axon uh, until it reaches the end. Um, what we, in our simplified diagram, we had as the uh, single uh, synaptic bouton here. Uh, and as we will see shortly, um, this action potential is then um, triggers a set of biochemical events that allows one neuron to speak to another neuron. Action potentials are, uh, they're dynamic. They start at the axon hillock near the, the cell body uh, and they spread very, very rapidly. They move along, they travel along the axon um, towards the synaptic bouton. Now, in the very first video, when I, I was discussing the, the basic anatomy of a neuron, I said that the axon is responsible for carrying information away from the cell body. Now you know exactly what that means. It's the action potential carrying that information in the form of this spike, this electrochemical spike, uh, this reversal of the membrane potential um, that spreads along the axon towards uh, the synaptic uh, bouton. Okay, so Let's have, another, let's have a look at another diagram. So here we can see, um, so we have a, let's say an action potential starts here, travels along the axon till it reaches the synaptic bouton, and here it must stop. There's no way for an action potential to spread or to jump from one neuron to um, another but the neurons do communicate, and they communicate via this chemical junction which connects the axon, or the, the synaptic bouton, of one neuron to one of the dendrites of another neuron. And this connection is called a synapse. Uh, and it is a chemical connection between 
neurons. It allows the information carried by the action potential to be transmitted to uh, another neuron via the second neuron's um, dendrites. So it allows the information to be passed from neuron to neuron or uh, in simple terms, it allows neurons to speak to each other. So, the synapse is of fundamental importance. You know, there's, there's two really important basic principles in all of neurobiology. One is the action potential, which we've now covered. The other is the synapse. The action potential uh, allows a neuron to generate information. The synapse allows the neuron uh, to communicate that information, to transmit that information to other neurons, to share that information with other neurons. It allows neurons to speak to each other. So, um, we will now look at um, or in the next video, um, we will look at the, the way that the synapse functions. So, I'll see you in the next video. Kidding. Uh, however, if um, if you do want to support the production of future courses, or you just want to leave a tip, um, then there are virtual tip boxes below. There's PayPal, Ko-fi, or Ko-fi, whatever it is, even a Bitcoin address if that is your thing. Minimally, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. And please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you use them. Alien Insect. And I think that's about it. I hope you're enjoying the course. Thank you.